Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is the companion YouTube channel to www.texasflycaster.com where you can go to find highly detailed information about fly fishing in Texas. Hi guys and welcome to the Friday edition of Texas Fly Fishing Report. Today is Friday, June the 6th, first Friday in June. So if you happen to be in Denton or North Texas area, we do have an event here called First Friday Denton. And it's a great event for those of you who are into things beyond the norm. And it's well worth the drive just to come and check out the, the galleries and the restaurants here in Denton, Texas. You can find more information about that at www.firstfridaydenton.com. I've created that event in 2010 and we've been going five years strong. So be sure and check that out. Well, the rains have finally stopped. We've heard they're going to come again, but uh, for now, we've got a break in the rain for about three or four days now. And the uh, lakes, like Lake Ray Roberts here, are dropping precipitously, very quickly actually. So what they're doing is they're varying those releases daily so that they can keep from flooding downstream. A lot of pressure on Louisville Lake, and that pressure continues on down the, the chain that is the Trinity River Basin. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm hearing kind of conflicting reports on the Texas Gulf Coast where um, there's reports of a lot of stingrays on the, on the flats and in, inshore. And that means that there's a lot of fresh water. And then on the other hand, I hear there's fishing as normal on the inshore waterways for redfish and, and trout. So somewhere in between is what you want to think about if you're uh, going to the Texas Gulf Coast to fly fish. I think it's probably a, a pretty good situation. I've heard the jetties. I had direct contact with some people talking about jetties and the blue waters moving inshore, moving in close. And the winds are very low. And we're talking in areas like Corpus Christi, Texas and down south. So keep your mind on the potential for not needing a boat and fly fishing off the jetties along the Texas coast. And that kind of fly fishing, you can get yourself into all kinds of different fish. Anyway, that's what's going on in general. We, uh, you know, have over the years had some technology changes and updates, and I try to move with the trends. One of the trends that is going on, and in, in what I'm doing right now, is a a uh, app called Periscope. So. I have a Periscope account. You can check out live feeds, ask questions, and things like that at the Periscope. You got to download that app. I think it works on all platforms now. And it's a great way to ask questions live. And I will be running a phone with Periscope simul simultaneously in the future. I think I've told you this before. But I'm um, just getting you guys ready for a whole new kind of thing. Along with that, you know, we have. Uh, uh, opportunities uh, like I said the water's dropping at Ray Roberts I've been out there a couple times this week and it's dropping really fast thanks to the US Army Corps of Engineers uh, that affects the habitat in drastic ways daily and so a fish flash when I put one of those out and I appreciate you guys purchasing the access to that information um, they're very timely that means that a week later maybe even less than a week that information will be old. So keep that in mind because the information I put out last week is no longer valid now. But it was about uh, the boat ramp at Sanger. And you can look back at that. And there's always a potential that the lake will go up again with these rains that are projected to come next week. No telling what's going to happen. The ground is still soaked. And along with all this rain and everything, you know, we've moved beyond the. Uh, problems of flooding and into the aftermath of mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are just rampant here and everywhere that this rain has happened. And one of the products I like, and they don't endorse me or anything, but I really have used their products for, I don't know, at least 10 years, is Smart Shield. They make a deep free uh, insect repellent and it contains 30 SPF sunscreen too. So that's, I've talked about Smart Shield in the past. This is uh, stuff that works and it doesn't have any DEET in it. So if you're anti-DEET, there you go. Also, as we get in, <laughs> the sun is out. So now we can actually get out and go fishing or go boating or whatever. Um, don't forget your Smart Shield sunscreen. This stuff is great, oil-free, won't 
harm bait or fly lines. Keep that in mind. No oil. So your fly lines and your bait and your bait wells will live with Smart Shield. It's proven. So that's two things right there. The great tips, I think. You know, they'll keep you uh, from getting burned to a crisp and eaten by mosquitoes. What's a kind of a deadly combination? And then here's a little third thing that I found the other day when I was at Best Buy. I wasn't looking for it, but I wanted to bump charge my phone or any of my other things that I have. And this is a little charger by Mophie. You want to look at these because when you get out on the water, let's just say you're in a boat and you're using your phone or you need your phone and it dies. So this thing will bump them up really fast. And again, that's by Mophie and it's small enough that you can take it with you. It doesn't weigh hardly anything and I'm guessing it's just a couple of batteries in there that get recharged and everything, USB connect and all that. So Mophie is the brand and that's the, uh, the one I picked. There's different sizes for different functions. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Finally, the rain has stopped, like I said, for the 15th time. And you're ready uh, here, I think, in a couple of weeks for Lake Ray Roberts, possibly, at the rate it's dropping, to open up again, open up the boat ramps, and be able to get easily access onto that lake. And I also have, as I'm dealing with purchasing a... Uh, a skiff. You've seen some information on that. It's lagoonboats.com. That's in Cocoa, Florida. Make sure you check that out. That's lagoonboats.com. Um, I'm selling some stuff. So buying a, buying a skiff means selling some kayaks. Keep your eyes out on my website. I'm going to go ahead and advertise that on the website. I've got some two kayaks that are rigged for fly fishing. That means you can stand on them and you can sure get to where you need to go. So keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Be sure to let me know if you've got any information on fly fishing in Texas because that's how we live. We live through you guys and your information as well as whatever I can find out, which I can, you know, there's hundreds of you watching now, so um, whatever you find out will probably have a lot of value to other people as well. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. And as always, check out www.texasflycaster.com for the written word. Thanks for watching this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. Thanks also goes out to the sponsors. If you need more information, be sure to visit www.texasflycaster.com. And if you have any information about fly fishing in Texas, feel free to share it, and we'll be glad to get it on the report.